unusual pets during the Victorian era. Pets were seen as a sign of status and class, and only the most indulgent and extravagant Victorian would claim to keep one by their side. If we've learned a thing or two about the Victorians, we know that normal didn't excite them, so it was quite common for them to shelter unusual and exotic pets. Let's take a look at how pets came to be an indispensable addition in Victorian, and now modern, households. Origin of animals as pets in households Our predecessors interacted and engaged with animals for thousands of years. Back then, pets were the picture of frivolity, indulgence and elite extravagance, which explains why only the rich aristocratic ladies could keep them. Until the 18th century, keeping a pet was seen as absurd, seeing that they were loud, noisy and annoying. As a result, it isn't hard to come across a satirical picture of a woman dressed in over-the-top, frivolous attire with a lap dog. Animals were typically expected to earn their keep, but by the 19th century, pets were considered an accepted part of domestic life. In response to the growth of industrial cities, the Victorians started placing emphasis on their homes as an idealised sacrosanct space. Pets became socially acceptable, which is very evident from paintings and architecture from that time. Take the 1880 painting, One of the Family, by Frederick George Cotman, for example. It showed a family at the dinner table, accompanied by a white horse sticking its head through the open door to be fed and a dog looking up at its mistress. Byron also kept an exotic pet, a tame bear, which he brought to the university and looked after in the stables. Dante Gabriel Rossetti, on the other hand, brought a wombat. As you can see, keeping unusual animals was a status symbol. However, as we moved towards the end of the 19th century, which was the peak of the evangelical movement, pets were used to cultivate moral values and commitment. The evangelical religious movement placed emphasis on morality. The cultural climate changed accordingly and parents were expected to bring up moral children. That was when pets took on a moral value. Dogs, for example, were said to have virtuous characteristics. They were steadfast, loyal, protective of their masters and courageous in the face of danger. Children's literature and manuals of the time advised children to keep rabbits, birds, guinea pigs and other small animals to improve themselves and their moral qualities. Pet keeping came with the expectation that it could help children develop commitment, faithfulness and caring values. But companionship and morality weren't the only reasons for pet keeping. Pets were also prized for their contribution to humans. Pedigree dogs were kept as a sign of class and status in elite Victorian homes and were prized for the colour and song they brought to the working class culture. On the other hand, cats were kept because they kept the mice and vermin away. By then, pets could enjoy loving companionship with their humans. Queen Victoria, for example, had pets of different breeds during her reign. She was very affectionate towards her pets and her sentiment was echoed by her subjects. She was also familiar with different breed types and their characteristics. The Queen thus took comfort in the companionship her pets, often dogs, offered. The era brought a change in how pets were treated and the modern world that emerged was kinder and much gentler in terms of animal welfare. In the 20th century, cats were eventually revered and loved just as much as dogs, though this often wasn't the case in history. For example, cats had a bad rep in Victorian times and their association with witches didn't help their case. They were not fed properly and were seen as sly and calculating. This has changed in modern times. Pets are generally divided into two categories. 
ones that thrive in spacious environments and ones that don't mind living indoors. Emphasis was placed on building relationships with pets, vet services, companies offering pet food and toys, books that taught you how to care for your pet and even pet cemeteries grew as a result. Two sociologists, Harold Bridger and Stephanie White, even argued that the decline of close-knit families would cause pets to become more popular with time. Types of animals used as pets during Victorian times. If Victorians settled for common pets like dogs and cats, they wouldn't really be Victorian in spirit, would they? Here are some types of animals that were all the rage during the Victorian era. Squirrels. Wild squirrels were frequently kept as pets in the Victorian era because people believed they cultivated caring among humans. Back then, you were supposed to catch them yourself, preferably as babies, so they'd be easier to tame. Owls. These quaint and affectionate birds could be trained as companions even if their nocturnal habits presented problems. One of the popular tactics at that time was offering it a mouse or beetle as a distraction to help it stay awake. Badgers. It is perhaps the most surprising animal to tame because it can burrow out of almost any enclosure. Badgers are great diggers so you'd have to install a cement floor and put up high wire fences to keep them. Their diet consisted of dog food with dried fruits. Ravens. Ravens were typically taken from the nest as fledglings, but pet keepers could purchase them from the market as well. Once you got a hold of the bird, you were advised to keep it in a large cage or train it so it would roam the garden of its own free will, but come back home to you. Jackdaws. Jackdaws, a member of the crow family, were kept as a popular alternative to ravens. Jackdaws were very talkative and you could teach them tricks. You could also make them learn words, though their vocabulary was very limited. Monkeys. Monkeys were ornamental, fashionable pets during the Victorian era. Monkeys could be vicious and spiteful to children and sometimes even adults. Their destructive behaviours grew with them. That is why it was recommended that a whole room be set aside for them. Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs were thought to improve cleanliness, which made them a valuable addition to London homes. Hedgehogs ate black beetles, a common type of insect that can not only damage food but also fibre products. So they were kept on the floor in London homes to waddle around and eat troublesome insects to earn their keep. Pets were a luxury back then and were seen as ornamental assets. That said, Victorians did show an affinity towards their furry and feathery friends, which explains how the animals went from being objectified to being an indispensable part of their homes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to be notified of new videos. See you in the next one.